Matter and Memory, 1896, by Henry Bergson, is a seminal philosophical work that dives into the complex relationship between the mind, memory, and matter, the physical world. Bergson challenges the traditional Cartesian dualism, which separates the mind and body into distinct entities, and instead offers a nuanced perspective that considers both as parts of a larger, dynamic interplay. Bergson begins by analyzing the problem of matter and the perception of matter. He posits that our perceptions are selective and practical, shaped by our biological needs and the actions we need to perform in the world. Perception, therefore, is not a passive reflection of the external world, but an active construction that serves our engagement with it. Matter, in Bergson's view, is a collection of images, and our perception is the discernment of these images insofar as they influence potential actions. He argues against the materialistic conception that suggests memory is merely a function of brain activity. Instead, Bergson introduces the idea of pure memory, which is independent of the physical workings of the brain. Pure memory encompasses all of our past experiences in their entirety. It exists outside of the immediate consciousness and does not have a specific location in the material brain. Rather, it is a non-physical entity or dimension where memories are stored and from which they can be recalled into consciousness. This pure memory is distinguished from habit memory, which is a form of memory that is grounded in the body and its learned behaviors. Habit memory doesn't require conscious recall. It is automatic and resides in the motor functions that we carry out without thinking, like riding a bicycle or playing a musical instrument. The process of remembering involves the interaction between pure memory and habit memory. When we try to recall something, pure memory provides the vast, detailed context of past experiences, which are then actualized into motor images by the body, turning them into memories we can consciously manipulate and utilize in the present. Bergson further discusses the duration and multiplicity of memory, insisting that memories are not static snapshots but rather unfold over time and are qualitatively different from each other. Memory is a form of prolongation of the past into the present, a continuous flow that maintains the individuality of experiences. Our consciousness stretches along the duration, where past, present, and future are not isolated but intertwined to create the fabric of experience, and thus personal identity. To explain how the brain mediates between pure memory and action, Bergson conceives of the brain not as a repository of memories, but as an instrument for focusing memory into action. The brain's function is to filter the vast multitude of memories so that only those relevant to the current situation and action pass into consciousness. Brain lesions or damages that affect memory do so not because they erase memories, but because they disrupt the process by which memories are made available to the present. Bergson's philosophy offers a profound exploration of the freedom of the soul. He suggests that while the body is subject to the deterministic laws of the physical world, the soul, through its capabilities of memory and choice, exhibits a degree of freedom that is not bound by material causality. The act of remembering is thus an act of freedom as it allows for the insertion of the past into the present, enabling the transformation of action by the depth and richness of experience. Bergson's exploration leads to a discussion of how the past persists into the present and the implications for free will. He argues that the experience of freedom arises out of the interplay between pure memory and the demands of present action. Our choices emerge from the culmination of our past experiences as filtered and applied in the current context, allowing us to act in ways that are unpredictable by mere mechanical laws. This interplay also accounts for the phenomenon of déjà vu, where an inexplicable familiarity with a present experience can be understood as an irregularity in the process by which past experiences are typically made relevant. Finally, Bergson explores the philosophical implications of his theory on the nature of consciousness, the soul, and the body. He argues for a form of dualism that is dynamic rather than static. Consciousness is not merely a ghost in the machine, but an active player in shaping our reality through its capacity for memory and action. The mind and the body are thus deeply interconnected, with the body functioning as the anchor point for the mind's actions in the material world, while the mind provides depth and continuity through memory. 
In contrast to the prevailing scientific and philosophical views of his time, which often reduced mental processes to physical or chemical reactions, Bergson's Matter and Memory presents a vision of human consciousness as a layered, complex process that is both deeply personal and fundamentally free. He insists that true understanding of the mind requires acknowledging the integral role of memory, not just as a brain function, but as a crucial aspect of our conscious experience and existential reality. Bergson's work in Matter and Memory thus offers a revolutionary understanding of the connection between mind and body, one that has had lasting implications for philosophy, psychology, and cognitive science. His work challenges us to rethink how we perceive the world, remember the past, and act in the present. By recognizing the fluidity and interdependence between matter and memory, Bergson's philosophy calls for a more holistic understanding of human existence, a synthesis where mind and body collaborate to shape the continuous flux of experience.